Okay, we're gonna pick right back up from where we left off. The previous slide that I covered was the action potential. And we talked about how the cell goes through an activation, an electrical uh, impulse, and then goes to, is depolarized with all the ions moving across the membranes and then um, essentially will start getting more negative. And at one point it'll dip below, which we refer to as hyperpolarization, um, which it dips below for about a thousandth of uh, a second. Um, and at that point, the neuron cannot fire again. So that's just a, just a really quick recap of the last thing that we did. I also talked about the all or none law, which is basically either the fire will, uh, the uh, neuron will fire or it won't. There's no in between. So that's communication in a neuron. If I were to ask you on, an, on a quiz, for example, um, what is the com communication within a neuron and what is the communication between a neuron? Within a neuron, we say, is, is strictly electrical. And when we talk about communication between neurons, then we are talking about a chemical uh, communication. So if you take a more advanced neuroscience class, you'll see that there's some exceptions to this, but generally speaking for this class's purpose, we're gonna talk specifically about, excuse me, chemical communication. So here is, for example, a, um, I had said that in a typical neuron, okay, so I'm gonna draw my basic neuron here. I'm not gonna draw the nucleus in it. This is the cell uh, soma, and then we have the dendrites, and here we have the axon, and then we have the terminal uh, leutons here. So when we have another happy little neuron right here, okay, and these are the dendrites, and it's attached to different cells here, okay, um, we'll give this one an axon, and this one terminal. Right here. Now, the area, this is the yellow, probably not going to be able to see this very well. Let's call this pink here. This right here, this connection between a, let's say, a terminal bouton of one cell and a dendrite of another. This, if you were to blow this up and take a look at this much, uh, much closer, what you would find is that they're actually not touching. Even though these cells are communicating with one another, there's actually a little gap between those two cells. And this is what we refer to as the synaptic gap. So a synapse is that communication point, and the gap itself is the synaptic gap. We call one the presynaptic neuron. So this is the neuron that's sending the information, and this is the neuron that's receiving the information. Okay, So it's getting this information into this cell. So this is the presynaptic part, and then this cell is the postsynaptic part. So this cell is receiving, this cell is sending. Now, once an, uh, a uh, presynaptic neuron um, is, uh, so, so an activated presynaptic neuron okay, can gen then generate an action potential. And so here, let's say uh, this is a presynaptic neuron here, okay? can generate a post, uh, a, a, um, an action potential that's going to travel through the axon terminals. And that essentially here, if you were to blow this up, okay, this, this neuron right here has, it almost looks like a little bubble, okay, a little button here. This is the end of this. So it'd be the end, let's say, of one of these, okay? It looks like this. And inside of those uh, terminal boutons are chemicals, okay? So these may be filled with particular chemicals that are kept in sacs. And these sacs here, so these, are the, these little dots are the chemicals, and these little sacs are called synaptic vesicles, okay? And these synaptic vesicles hold the chemicals which we refer to as neurotransmitters. And these are the messengers that are manufactured in the neuron. Some of them are manufactured actually in, in, in are transmitted through the, the, the axon. So some are manufactured here and then they transmit through the axon. But many are actually manufactured in the terminal bouton itself. And so these um, action potentials, these electrical stim stimulation, will actually stimulate the release of these to the next cell. So to this cell right here, okay? And so these chemical messengers can give a lot of different information. Some of them moderate other chemicals. 
Some of them, they specifically um, activate other neurons. Some of them uh, don't activate other neurons, so they actually inhibit them. And we're going to talk about those different things uh, here in a minute. So when looking at this whole thing, okay, this communication thing, okay, so in a particular cell, we have the dendrites here, okay, this is one cell that's got an action potential and it's going through the terminal, uh, the, through the axon here to the terminal buttons or boutons to the dendrite of this cell. Okay, so it's going to, this message is going to be received in this case through the dendrites, okay, and that uh, electrical signal, if it's not stimulation, will um, uh, uh, be processed in the cell body, and then it'll activate here through the axon, go through the axon terminal, and then here you can see is the synaptic gap, okay? So this would be like, this received the messages from the dendrites to the cell body through the axon, okay? Through the axon terminals, which is the terminal boutons, okay? And then here we see the synaptic gap. So here is the synaptic cleft or synaptic gap here. It is not physically attached to the next cell. So this would be the end, okay? This right here would be the end. And then this right here is the receiving side. Okay, so this is the presynaptic, and this is the postsynaptic, okay? Now, if you blow this up even further, each one of these is the little uh, vesicles, okay? And those vesicles contain the neurotransmitters or the chemicals, and those chemicals can be released into the gap. So this would be those chemicals that are released into the gap. And what we have here is these specific chemicals are very, very important. And think of it like a lock and key. So the chemical is kind of like a key, and the, pre, the postsynaptic cell needs to receive these chemicals, but it needs to have the right lock in order to take the right chemical. And these right here are what we refer to as receptors, or receptor sites. And each receptor site has a lock and can take a particular key. So here we can see, that in this case, this particular neurotransmitter has this shape, okay? Almost like a little mushroom. So if you look here, this one can fit on this particular receptor, and this can open this receptor and allow for that chemical to be transmitted to the next neuron. If there are not receptors that can take these chemicals, then it cannot take the message, okay? So many neurons have different kinds of receptor types, okay? Some of them here, you can see this one can fit specifically on this one, okay? And so this one will go into here and then it can open up this particular receptor if it can fit, okay? If it can fit. Here we can see one already fitted, and it's already opened this receptor, and now the chemicals can go in, okay? Now, the next uh, slide is a really uh, blown up version of this. So here is an example of two different kinds of neurotransmitters. Here, this is norepinephrine, which is also referred to as noradrenaline. Okay, so you might have heard of epinephrine or adrenaline. We also have norepinephrine or noradrenaline. This, as you can see, is a very specific chemical structure, and this chemical structure must fit, this is the, this is the key, must fit the receptor lock. Here, this is acetylcholine. And as you can see, acetylcholine is a very specific chemical structure that must fit specifically onto the acetylcholine lock. So if the acetylcholine fits properly with this, it can open up this receptor and allow for the chemicals to, to enter the cell. So this would be the cell membrane right here. And if it open it up, it's like a gate, it will allow it to come through. So, <laughs> what I'd like for you to do is uh, to 
um, end, stop the video, and I want you to go ahead and I want you to watch this YouTube video. It's a very, very good video. Um, and uh, it's something that I think will be very helpful for you to understand and see this in action and how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new video, um, uh, continuing on with neurotransmitters so that we can um, continue on with this same talk.